Yo, I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. Yo, I got the job 10 days ago. Do you want a perfect monologue? Shut up. This is epic, all right? Like, whose idea was this? And Barbie is on a plastic doll with big boobies. <laughs> Do it again, like, you better cross, cross, cross. What kind of do? Yes! That's it! Is this racist? So Joe Coy has done an opening monologue for the Golden Globes just last night. Already in less than 24 hours, he's had to issue apologies. I got away. It was a compliment. It's like she could be more intimate tonight. Yeah. That's all. He's already on morning news explaining that it didn't go well and it was a really hard job to do. As far as like, I, I don't think you should feel bad. I mean, there, you got a ton of laughs. I mean, if if you had, I mean, were there yeah. some specific moments that you're talking about? Because I mean, I thought it was still overall. Decent. Um, I am yet to see the full thing, so I'm just wondering how bad could this possibly be? I'm also wondering, are people overreacting, or is this as cringe as people are saying? Complete dead Wait, he loses it. Wait. Some I wrote, some other people wrote. Robert De Niro is here! That's the spot. Let's just cringe together, because there is something about cringe that is like seeing a car crash that you can't look away from, and I love it. And on top of that, it's live, and we get awkward celebrity reactions. Like, great. My, my real big question is, is this going to out-cringe Ariana DeBose's Angela Bassett did the thing musical number? Angela Bassett did the thing Viola Davis, my woman king Blanche Kate, you're a genius and Jamie Lee, you are all of us! We will see. So let's just get into it. I'm your host, Joe Coy. I love that from the jump, like Reese Witherspoon already looks nervous. It feels like almost a premonition, right? Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner's never here. Kevin's like in a mountain with a cow or something, but today he's here. So I love that at the start, the crowd's still with him, right? He made a pretty average joke, basically just saying, shouldn't Kevin Costner be on the set of Yellowstone? Ha 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 ha. And everyone's giving him the fake laugh at this point. So I'm wondering which joke tanks this audience participation. Like, let's see. Just trying to guess who would win, and every time my mom would say, it's Meryl Streep, stupid. <laughs> who else is going to win? She wins every time. And she was right. You do. You win all the time. So, so far, none of what he said is offensive. It's just not particularly funny. We are all very aware that Meryl Streep has a lot of awards, but let's hope that he gets a bit funnier, right? Like, let's hope. That's why when the Golden Globes called me and asked me if I wanted to host, I jumped to the chance and I said, yes, yes. And then they asked me if I saw every movie and every TV show. And then I said, yes, I lied. All right, not bad. I actually appreciate that he's opened the monologue saying, I haven't seen all these movies. I, I was watching Oppenheimer. I loved Oppenheimer. I loved Oppenheimer. I just, I just got one complaint. Needed another hour. So we're already cringing a bit, right? Because that wasn't an amazing joke. I love that Robert Downey Jr. isn't even trying to give him a fake laugh here. He's sort of like, really, man? So I felt like it needed some more backstory. Also, not to be like a super nerd, but like it wasn't even the biggest, longest mainstream movie that came out this year. I don't think too many people were actually too phased about the runtime of Oppenheimer. Like literally Avengers Endgame is the highest grossing movie of all time and it was three hours. It's just off to a bit of a weird start. New Year's resolution for 2024 is to finish Oppenheimer in 2025. Like seriously, it's, I'm almost there. I love Oppenheimer's. Especially the first season. Like it's not offensive. It's just not funny. And I love that it keeps cutting to the Oppenheimer cast just being like, <laughs> That's so stupid. And I love, I actually love that he knows he's bombing. Like he literally made that joke and just went, oh my God, so stupid. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> I love this little reaction from Joey Coy here where he basically goes, oh my God, that joke was so bad. It's like we're watching him in real time realize he's about to just completely bomb. Cause his jokes from what I hear are about to get way, way worse. Oppenheimer is based on a 721 page Pulitzer Prize winning book about the Manhattan Project. And Barbie is on a plastic doll with big boobies. <sighs> big boobies. Oh. Big boobies. Oh. Big boobies. Oh, Jesus. Big oh, the cringe. Oh, it's coming over me. It's coming over me. A wave of cringe. So I think we've confirmed where he loses the crowd and where the cringe sets in. He basically just said, yeah, Oppenheimer's this really smart movie about a scientist and Barbie is about a doll with big boobies. And Barbie is on a plastic doll with big boobies. I'm 
to talk about Oppenheimer and say how amazing it is because it was based on this Pulitzer Prize winning book, 721 pages, like it's such a great film. Right. And is there a punchline? Yeah, I'm going to compare it to Barbie, which is a film about a plastic doll with big boobies. <laughs> Please tell me you're not going to say the word boobies. Of course I am. Boobies is hilarious. And so is the joke. Uh, this is this is a bad joke. This is, a, this is a really bad joke. First off, the word boobies in general, just painful. Big boobies. Boobies is hilarious. And so is the joke. Also, you know what? I'm not even particularly offended that he's highlighting that one of them is this really, really smart intellectual movie on paper and the other one's just a movie about dolls. Like I can deal with that. But the thing is, the reason this joke isn't funny is twofold. One, a lot of the appeal of Barbenheimer, the reason it was this meme, the reason it was this big cultural event is the acknowledgement that two movies in completely different fields appealing to a completely different demographic are competing on the same day. That was kind of the big joke. And that's why people started doing the double feature like as a society we've already acknowledged that joke like two movies that couldn't be more different and one of them is this really big grandiose three-hour epic and the other one is a silly goofy fun barbie movie I think the second reason this joke doesn't work is he could have just left it at one is this really smart movie about a scientist that's based on a 721 page book and the other one is about plastic dolls. Adding the big boobies part just feels completely tasteless and obviously does spit in the face of what that movie was going for. I'm not really mad at him. I don't think he should be cancelled, but obviously that joke was going to just completely, completely tank and cutting to Greta Gerwig's reaction there is just completely, completely painful. I can handle the joke, I just think it's painfully unfunny. And the joke really needed to land to be able to get away with that, and it just didn't. Watch Barbie, I loved it, I really did love it. Um, I don't want you guys to think that I'm a creep, but it was kind of weird being attracted to a plastic doll. It's just something about your eyes, right? Oh, Jesus. Just kind of painful. The extent of the thought of this joke is pretty much just, ha ha ha, you thought I was talking about a girl, but I was actually attracted to a guy. And that's not what guys should be attracted to. Ha 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 ha. Um, I also think Ryan Gosling's reaction here is interesting because it seems like he's almost not giving a fake laugh because he's so put off about the big boobies joke. Big boobies. And honestly, like, fair enough. Like, the big boobies joke was really bad and spits in the face of what Barbie was going for and not even for a good punchline. It's for a punchline that we all already acknowledged and it's the reason Barb and Heimer existed. Just really fucking bad. The key moment in Barbie is when she goes from perfect beauty to bad breath, cellulite, and flat feet. Ah, or what casting directors call character actor. <laughs> Why do people assume that a character actor means ugly but a good actor? It is derived from the general idea, which is mostly true, that certain kinds of roles, lead roles, go overwhelmingly to people who look good enough. Character actor. <laughs> some I wrote, some other people wrote. Robert De Niro's here! All right, so this is the first joke where he really starts scapegoating and kind of double backing and saying, oh, some of these jokes I wrote, some of them I didn't, and basically throwing his joke writers under the bus because he can feel that it didn't land. However, I'm just going to have to give him some credit here. I actually don't think it was that bad of a joke. Really, all this is doing is commenting on the fact that when Hollywood casts people that aren't seen as attractive, instead of just kind of quietly acknowledging that or ignoring that, they'll describe them as character actors, basically saying they're not A-listers, they're not lead material, but they're character actors. So basically, whenever you need someone who isn't traditionally attractive or has a bit of an off-putting presence, it's kind of a backhanded compliment at this point, if not just insulting. And I think that's what he's commenting on here. And it's kind of a shame that this is one of the jokes that doesn't land because I actually think it's kind of perceptive and kind of smart. And to me, it almost feels like it's something that the internet likes to acknowledge, but something that the people in this industry don't want to acknowledge. Some I wrote, some other people wrote. Robert De Niro's here! <laughs> Yo, I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. Ha <laughs> ha
All right, we have hit maximum cringe. Yo, I got the job 10 days ago. Do you want a perfect monologue? Shut up. This is epic, all right? Like, whose idea was this? Like, he has literally got on stage, tanked for four minutes, and is now going, yo, shut the fuck up, guys. Uh, what do you want from me? Do you want me to make you laugh? Like, give me a break. This is hysterical. I actually, I love this. I don't know if this is weird, obscure performance art or what, but I actually think breaking the tension here and acknowledging that he's bombing this hard is hysterical. I've seen a lot of people online get really angry at him and basically saying only a man would do this to get up on stage and basically tell the crowd off for not laughing. I think this is funny. Maybe not in the way he intends and maybe not in the way that we typically want, but watching someone literally just like nosedive on stage and, and just start like blame shifting is hilarious. I love it. Yo, shut up. You got, you're kidding me, right? Slow down. I wrote some of these and they're the ones you're laughing at. Look. And he's been a prick. I love it. I wrote the ones you laughed at and that's it. Like, this is so funny to me because I'm just imagining the writers in the back room watching Joe do this to them. Watching him throw them completely under the bus, seeing they're going, yep, we should have just stayed on strike. Really? We came back to work for this? I'm out. I quit. I'm done. Hilarious. Robert De Niro's here. I'm sorry. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm fanning out. I love you, Robert. Okay? If it's awkward, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to do that in front of you. I know it sucks. All right, so at this point, we are just watching Joe have a complete mental breakdown on stage. He literally just went, Robert De Niro's here. I love you, Robert. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, this is bad. He is spiraling at this point, hard. Um, I'm a bit awestruck. This guy's amazing, decade after decade. He just kills it every single time. I don't know how you do it, man. I swear to God. Swear to God. I don't know how he keeps going at this point. Like he has lost the crowd completely. Robert De Niro isn't smiling. Like, I don't know how he does it. Like, credit to him for going on rather than getting off the stage at this point, because I, I couldn't do it. Your last performance is gonna be your greatest performance ever. How'd you get her pregnant at 80? I kind of like it. I kind of like that joke. Is that bad of me? Is that bad of me? I kind of like the joke. Is that really bad of me? Like, it's stupid. It's really stupid. But uh, Robert De Niro, I laugh. So as a result, I'm kind of laughing with him. At this point, I'm just trying to picture Joe Coy seriously trying to engage with Killers of the Flower Moon if this is how his brain works. Like, I can't picture it. Can you? The one thing I learned about that movie is that white people stole everything. You guys stole everything. Not like 97%. You guys stole 100% of everything. I, I love that his joke here is basically like, oh, I thought white people only stole 97% of Native Americans things, but they actually stole 100%. Uh, that's too much. Like, it's such a weird joke. Like 97% is still an outrageous amount. Like, what's his point here? You took the land, you took the oil, you took the premise of the movie. <laughs> what, that was your premise? What? What? What is this joke? What is this joke? I assume the angle that Joe is taking here is, oh, why people stole a native story, but the story is specifically focusing on the FBI investigations and the white people committing the crimes and was written by a white author and the movie itself actually really did involve the native community. It's a really, really bizarre joke and totally flops. That's hilarious. I don't care. It's just that the room is really white. The room's like, yeah, we did take it. And? His whole angle here of why people are just sitting there going, oh yeah, we took it and, and it's like, that's not the tone of the movie at all. Mrs. Molly Cobb, 50 years of age, passed away at 11 o'clock Wednesday night at her home. She was a full blood Osage. This is a really bizarre joke and he needs to leave it on the cutting room floor. I don't know why he's still going. I watched Saltburn. I watched Saltburn. I watched Saltburn. <laughs> You know what I loved about Saltburn? All right, I don't know if I can handle Joe talking about Saltburn. I just, I don't know if I can do it at this point. Please don't ruin Saltburn. Is Barry Keoghan here? Is Barry Keoghan? Where's Barry Keoghan seated? Barry. Where, oh, oh, where's there? I love that Barry is literally hardy at this point, being like, I don't want to be seen. Don't talk about me. What are you going to do? Is Barry Keoghan here? Is Barry Keoghan? Where's Barry Keoghan seated? Barry. Where, oh, oh, where's there? Where's your penis seated? <laughs> Down front? That was the real star of the show. That was the real star of the show. Very penis. I mean, I guess that's why he was hiding, right? He did not want that joke and he knew there was a penis joke coming, but also a mad compliment, like whatever. If you haven't seen Sopper, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. So watch it. Then you'll understand what I was talking about. And then right after that, watch Barbie. And then you're gonna be like, something, something's missing. And then watch Maestro and you'll be like, oh, there it is. It's on Bradley Cooper's face. <laughs> what? That's hilarious. It's mad. 
I actually think that was an okay joke. Basically, he's saying like, oh, watch Saltburn, you'll see what you're missing. Then watch Barbie and you'll wonder where all the penises are. Obviously, because the dolls don't have genitals, I don't think he was making a weirdly sexist remark. And then the punchline was, oh, and then you'll find it on Bradley Cooper's face because Bradley Cooper is playing Leonard Bernstein, who has a comically large nose prosthetic. I think that's a good joke on paper. I think he lost the crowd a bit when he started talking about Barbie. What? That's hilarious. It's I actually agree. I have to agree with him. I think that was a good joke and he's just lost the crowd at this point. I think they're all upset with him about the boobies joke. So now the fact that he's talking about Barbie again and genitalia, it's rubbing them the wrong way. But I, I don't think that was that bad of a joke. I'm sorry. When I was watching my show. I was like, that thing was dancing in Saltburn. That was the original joke was Barry Keoghan's penis is the size of Bradley Cooper's nose in Maestro, but he had to say it again and now he gets the laugh. Interesting. By the way, the color purple is also what happens to your butt when you take Ozempic. The room, half the room is cringing and the other half is like, I gotta get home and grab my selfie stick. Just gonna be home after the globes. Man, he was lying. More of a magenta. Is it weird to take the movie, The Color Purple, a, a movie about slavery and the systemic oppression of black women and make it a joke about a Zempic? Like, yes, like it is really weird. But I think the punchline of everyone in the crowd having to go home and check is kind of funny. I just don't think he has the delivery skills that Ricky Gervais has when Ricky Gervais made these edgy sort of jokes. Succession is coming to an end after four beautiful seasons. I loved it. I loved everything about it. The one thing that this show taught me is if you're a billionaire, pull out. <laughs> None of them are going to be like you. They're going to be a bad version of you. Just pull out. Yelling at people in a crowd to pull out when they get home is just a, it's just a bit cringe. Dude, I feel like if any billionaires had a healthy sex life in that crowd after Joe Coy made that joke, like it is completely tanked, just totally in a ditch. Is if you're a billionaire, pull out. This just puts the billionaires in the crowd in such an awkward position. Because now every time Jeff Bezos has sex with his wife and is about to finish, he then thinks of Joe Coy bombing on stage at the 2024 Golden Globes. Pull out. Pull out. Just so painful. Just a great series about a rich, white, dysfunctional family, all scheming. Oh no, that's the crown. That's the crown. I'm sorry. It's just such an easy joke to make, right? Like succession is a super rich white family and the crown is a super rich white family. Like, is there even that much of a joke? Are they even that different really? Like, what's the joke here, Joe? Nomination. She's got 34 nominations. This woman, there's nothing she can't do. This is the greatest of all time. That's the goat right there. My mom loves you. I love the look from John Hamm here. John Hamm is like genuinely just perplexed. He's like, please let it be over. I can't watch any more of this. Where is this God awful Meryl Streep joke going? Mom loves you. The way you said Wakanda forever. <laughs> it's, it's, it's brilliant. Do it again. Like, you better cross, cross, cross. Wakanda forever. Dude. Yes. That's it. Is this racist? This feels weird. This does not feel right. First off, mad credit to Meryl Streep for just going, yep, okay, fine. I'll do the Wakanda forever salute. But this is just, I mean, Chadwick Boseman would be rolling in his grave at this point. This is just otherworldly levels of cringe. Like what is going on here? Is the joke literally just, haha, we got a white person to do Wakanda forever? Am I missing something? Like is the joke here just, we got a white person to do the fictional Wakanda forever salute? Again, good on Meryl Streep for going along with it to save us even more cringe. But like, this is just, Awful. Please welcome Golden Globe winner, star of 911, Angela Bassett, and the Golden Globe winner who likes to be, who I like to call Hot Jesus, Jared Leto. All right, well, that was awful. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and let me know what you'd like me to cover. Thank you so much.